Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How is everybody? Hope you're all well. Hope you've all had a good week. And welcome to uh, Friday Night Live with myself and two good friends, Wayne, the gentleman would know, Wayne, the woodturner, and <laughs> Mark, the gentleman woodturner. Let's bring the guys in. I do that every time. I always get confused. It's Friday. It's my, head is melting. Times, folks. my head is melting yeah. on a Friday night. I am definitely not a gentleman. <laughs> no, I'm not a wood Jedi. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, guys, welcome to uh, Friday Night's Live, and I uh, hope you've all had a great week. Hope everybody's still safe and well, and uh, let's get the weekend started. So, um, I made a blank the other night, um, which I'll, I'll show you guys in a moment. It's with some oak and mahogany that I had. I just chucked some bits together just for something different to turn rather than a, a big, chunky piece of wood. So I'll bring over the camera and show you guys what I did. Um, it's nothing major. Don't get too excited. So it's around just under five inches across by five inches. That's how wide the bit of oak I had was. And then I stuck some uh, pieces of mahogany to it around about an inch thick. These are a little bit over two inches, I think. So just about two and a quarter inches. So... Um, oak mahogany, oak mahogany. So I've put one on the bottom here. But I'm going to use most of this to hold in the chuck. So a lot of that's going to be gone. And obviously this will be our top with our swan in it. So hopefully we should end up with about a four and a bit inch wide vase by the time we've got it turned. So that's the plan anyway. So I'll get this roughed um, round. And the guys will welcome you in. Is that all side green, Steve? Yeah, you carry on, Mark. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. It's all side grain. Yeah. Right from the participants list provided by YouTube: Alan de Rosario, Andy H's for turning, Barry Chitty, Barry's Wood Creations, Brent Beecroft, Brian at Hardwood Turning, Circular Wood by Keith, Cornish Made, 1982, Douglas Mungham, Duncan the Curly Turner, Gerard the French Turner, Hodgepodge Woodworks. I love wood turning Adam. Hello again, Adam. Spoke to you earlier. John Scarborough, Kim Dickerson. Steve, can I stop you there? Yeah. Right. Don't use your spindle rough and gouge on that. It's side green. That's why I was asking. Right. Okay. Use I was going to use the bowl gouge and then I thought no. Use a bowl gouge, yeah. Um, Mo Valley Maker, Neil M, Ronnie Uchbo, DC Woodwork, The Wood Dude, Hi Stephen, Trevor P, Hobby Turner. Ivy Wood Shed, Wood Wizardry by Colin, and Wood Turning by Barry. Apologies if I've missed you out. Play me too. <laughs> Hope everybody's happy and well. Keeping busy. I'm just glad it's the weekend. What's that? Yeah, what's, what's that? that? Yeah. yeah, what's that? Yeah, what's, what, what's the weekend? Be of turning Barry Fisher's in. Peter Corcoran's just come in. What was loose? Good evening, everybody. Now, I gave an answer in the chat to um, Brent earlier on. He was asking about the finish for 
a, a thin walled, very wet bowl and I put in oil. Yep. Lemon oil, Danish oil, hemp oil. Mark from Shop Talk Workshops in. Evening. Hey, Mark. Hi, Mark. Has he come to tell us about his secret project that he's doing? Yeah, he was, Ooh, I do. Oh, he, I was, he was putting on Facebook the other day. Pete from Twisted Trees is in and he says, in my book, this counts as segmented turning and about as complex as I can deal with. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I tried a piece of uh, segmented turning the other day. Uh, but I thought I'd, I'd start off uh, fairly simple with the segments, and I just I just use one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me two next time, Wayne. Two. <laughs> Push them both out. One segment, I like it. <laughs> really, could say that every piece you do is segmented, couldn't you? If you're only going to use one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Gerard's just given me a compliment on the the uh, piece I did earlier on today. Thank you, Gerard. Rex B's in. Hi, Rex. Hi, Rex. Oh, come on. Uh, Robert uh, said that he used um, Danish oil on a recent wet thinned walled bowl and it worked a treat. Put a different stock in that. Mark's in. Mark Stroughton's in. Good evening, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. There's three of us. Mark, Mark, Mark. That sounds like a dog with a hair lip. Hair lip, shit. <laughs> the old one's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they're not. They're just the old ones. Mm. Well, Mark, shop dog, said if I've missed anyone, he's sorry. The chat's moving quickly. I think he's just being ignorant, seeing how he's from Fife. <laughs> Shopdog Mark says, secret project is a secret. No spoilers. All right, okay. Steve, are you using a step drive or a four prong drive? I was using the one I got from Axminus, the one with multiple points on it. Crown drive, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish this pass and I'm going to put a mortise on this end so we can get it in the chuck. Trevor P. Hobby Turner says. He's just finished a, bi a biscuit barrel, almost 180 segments, 16 segments per ring. Nice. Uh, Stevens in from Wood, dude. Hi to everybody. Didn't say. Uh, hi to everybody. Didn't say hi to. Had to take a call, but the phone's off now. Rex has said, uh, hi everybody, hope all of you will be near Wayne's place and pilfering his gorgeous Ashwood supply. Mm -hmm. Like it is the Oh, thank you, Rex. Rex, I'm not... Wait, Wayne doesn't really live near Dumfries. He lives in the outer Hebrides. Just wants everybody to think he lives near Dumfries. And there is no way anybody is getting to know about this wood supplier. Secret squirrel. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's nice when you get something like that 
Keep it a secret. Paul is in. Wonder when Paul is in. Good evening, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. So what projects are people working on at the weekend then? I've got filming to do for my video and piece to put together for Monday. Don't know what I'm doing yet. Neil Gould's in. Hi Neil. It's a hard old bit of oak. Come on. Gorge made saying road trip, Mark. Up to see Wayne with Chris, yeah? We could do that. I know where he lives. <laughs> but he does have scary dogs. Question is, though, Mark, would he let you in? <laughs> Neil Gold's in. Hi, Neil. So, it's a little bit big, really. A little bit more for that. There, you can see that, can you, down there? See what? Well, I'm cutting the tenon. No, I can't really see this. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the, the Peach just said we used to live in the Outer Hebrides when they were heavily forested islands. Yeah. <laughs> Katie is offering to bring you cake, Wayne. <gasps> well. And I can speak from experience. Katie's cakes are fabulous. Have fab. Her sugar free lemon drizzle cake was awesome. John McDonald's in. Good afternoon, John. So you ruined it for me then when you said sugar free. You wouldn't have known. Would you not? No. It was gorgeous. Right, so we should be able to get a good finish on that now. Robert from Hodgepodge said keep your friends close, your enemies closer, and your wood supplier. I don't have a dealer. Who told you? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Mark. As from today, we can travel anywhere in Scotland. We're still not allowed to cross the border into England, mind, but we can travel anywhere in Scotland. Uh, Steve from Wooddude is saying he's actually thinking about starting to make some videos on his colouring techniques. What do you guys think? Uh, I think that would be absolutely brilliant, Steve, because some of the colouring you're doing at the moment is fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Share your talent. Well, Wayne, have you guys up in Scotland not got the memo then? What's up? We, well, we, we're thinking of making that arrangement permanent. Coming across the border. Yeah, so is Jimmy Cranky. <laughs> So Katie's saying, if only my woodturn was as good as my kick. Laugh out loud. Must kick Chris off his lathe to practice. What, you're going to be doing cake on the lathe, Katie? <laughs> oh, she's, she's very good at the poke up. Oh, Mark's just saying there, he's waiting for the for the flooding to happen to my place again. And he's going to wait for the blanks to fl float, out, float out of the workshop. <laughs> Here's Mark. Oh, you're all hot. <laughs> With friends like that. The blanks would be the first thing up in the loft. <laughs> what kind of shape are you thinking of, Steve? Um... I was th thinking of more of a... Um, hmm. like a 
Egyptian, narrow at the neck and then bulging out to a small. F I might actually not put a foot on it, but I might part it and do it so it's freestanding, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So I'm not going to turn that down no more because we're going to lose some of that. So. Like a teardrop. Sort of a teardrop shape. Yeah, but I want the top to flume out, if you know what I mean. A little bit. Yeah. I know, what you, I know what you're talking about. So, if... Right, Re Rex has just said he just completed a mahogany cereal bowl using your Yorkshire grit, and Tammy loves it. And uh, she says, Wayne, Mark, Steve are great menders. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peter's asking what wood. It's oak and mahogany, Pete. Yep. Your dad's, dad's in. in. Hi, Dad. Oh, said that together. I'm surprised nobody's asked this yet, Steve, but uh, which glue did you use to glue the pieces together? Yeah, I was waiting for it. I use Starbond, if anyone. Not Starbond, um, Lock, uh, Starbite. Tape, Tape no. Bond. Lock Bond. Tight Bond. That's the one. Tight Bond. Tight Bond, that's Tight the one. That's what I said. Tape two bond. or three. Um, the red one. Tight Rex bond. is asking, uh, Wayne, if you're locked down, how are you getting your wine supplies? My little oh, we're not really locked. We're not really locked down, Rex. I'm, we're still able to get out to the shops and everything. So I might increase that neck length a little bit on there. So I'm going to bulge it in about here. And then we'll see what we've got. And Ben has just said, just heard on the radio, due to the boat or ship, that got stuck. There is now a massive shortage of garden gnomes and um, bedroom toys. Bedroom toys? That's what he said. Robert said, sounds like that boat would be an interesting boat to get stuck on. <laughs> yeah, but it... it it had about 20,000 containers, Robert. I think it would take a bit of time searching. Rex, Mark's asked you a question. Uh, no, I'm just... I'm glad you've asked that, Rex. I'm just... That's why I went quiet. I'm just filling in the last bits of uh, online buttons to press and I'm going to make the donation so I'll tell everybody how much the final total was 
Okay. Joe Sane has just come in. Evening, Hi, Joe. Sure. And Jane just shouted hello as well, Joe. So, make this a little bit more. Are you just going to drill this, Steve, or are you going to try and hollow it? I was thinking about just drilling it and then just round the, obviously where the swan necked out, just clean that up a little bit. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. You said hi, Jim. Jim Crawford, then. Right, Douglas is asking me, he's just watched uh, Andy Phillips' video that uh, Andy put up earlier on today. He turned a ball from a board that he put together. He cut circles at an angle and uh, stacked them and turned it. It looked great. Have you ever tried that? No, Douglas, I don't tend to cut things to, into bits and glue them back together. It, it, um, Andy's done, um, it, he's actually done a, a few things like that, and they look absolutely brilliant. Don't get me wrong, it's just something I'm not into. Uh, Neil is asking you, Steve, how are you getting on with your Simon Hall Holloman tools? Uh, I've only used them once at the moment, um, but I want to spend a bit more time on them. Um, what I did last week, I really enjoyed with the... Um, they made, you mean, I've always kept away from hollowing because of, um, I had issues, well not issues, but I turned a piece and that sort of fripped me, fripped me a little bit. So, uh, but with them they sort of, um, built my confidence back up, let's put it that way. So, uh, I'm looking forward to spending a bit more time playing with them. And I think that's what right. the key word is, isn't it? You've got to keep practising. Yeah, yeah, I've got to keep practising. Right, Katie's asking, so if and when I get round to making this cake stand, what do you, um, Wayne, Mark and Steve, just talking about, recommend a coated with so it's safe for cake? Okay, you've got a couple options here. If you go down the, the chestnut route, you can get um, a food safe finish from chestnut products. If you go to home base, you can get um, a butcher block finish which is food safe and antibacterial yeah. if you want to go down the wax route um hampshire sheen uh, gloss wax is food and toy safe as well it's what i use for worktops the uh the chopping board oil and billy's woodworks is in hey billy Right, Billy. Right, does that look does that look flat there, or does that look? No, it, it looks not that bad, Steve. Tell you the truth. What's it look like to you? That's more the point. Well, it looks like I've got a flat bit there for some reason. Let me just see if I can get rid of that flat bit there. Sorry, folks. I will be with you in a second. Right, Joe Senior is asking: Is this a honk by any chance? Just asking. A what? A, a gonk. Honk. honk? No, a honk. Honk. What's a honk? I don't know what a honk is. No, neither do I tell you the truth. Well, does she mean a gonk? 
Does she mean a gonk? Yeah. She's trying to bully me into doing a gonk. So Wood was in by Colin has said he's just put a new cutter on his eight mil eight mil air hole polower and he sliced his finger open because it was razor sharp. <laughs> That wasn't a very good idea, Colin. Joe did mean a gonk. Yeah, no, I have ordered the stuff for a gonk. Um, I've ordered the fabric. So as soon as it comes, I will make... I will do a live and do one. Right, See? Mark has just put, Mark's just put in the final amount that uh, from the the fundraiser he did last week, and the total comes to twelve hundred and ninety six pounds. Well, well done, done, Mark. Mark. Well Thank done, you. mate. Very good figure, and well done to everybody who came over and helped out. Right, Dewey Shed is asking what uh, what layers is that? And what sort of dust collection have you got, Steve? Um, it's the Record Power C CL4. So it's the same as the CL3, but with variable speed. And I have the Camvac um, twin motor extraction with, I think it's a 30 litre can. I don't know, whatever. Um, Kim Dickerson's just come in. Evening, Kim. Hi, Kim. So let's get that and, sanded up. And sadly, Mark has to leave to go back to work. That's Mark Stroughton, by the way. Oh, sorry to hear that, Mark. See you later, Mark. So let's sand this up. So I don't know how this... Loads of comments coming, coming in about the amount that Mark raised on his uh, charity thing. Yeah, well done. At the end of the day, folks, all I did was stand there and make a fool of myself. You guys did all the work, so a huge thank you from me. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. That kind of money will make a big difference to the Sepsis Trust. That's going to help a lot of people. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Mall Valley makers in the CL4 is now discontinued. Yeah, it is. They don't do them at all. Yeah, I see that the other day when I was looking on Record Powered's website. I think the Coronet does virtually the same as what this does anyway. Door 60's just come in. Hi, door. Hi, door. And also a massive thank you to Steve for donating the bowl that he turned that's so right. we were able to auction off on the evening as well. Oh, that's not a problem. Anything to help? Ruby's hey. just come in. Hello, Hello Ruby. Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Ruby, your tennis ball is awesome. Yeah, it was. Absolutely. Yep. Oak and mahogany, Joe. But I, I don't know why this is. I don't know. I, I really don't know why this is happening. But there seems to be a lot of people out in the chat there, actually talking about reverse history. I don't know why that is. Sorry, when you just broke up, then what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> what he said was <laughs> why does Steve, your lathe only go forwards <laughs> oh, you lot could have turned this fast with a skew you know I could have done you want me to use a skew for the first time on a live 
<laughs> and I thought we was friends. Hey, William Hinn is... Um, <laughs> William Hinn said he turned some wet cherry today and then his spelling goes all the hell. Uh, do I still put it in the paper bag of wet shavings? Yes, I would. Yep. And Brian has put the, the song in again, which I'm not going to sing. <laughs> We're turning across the internet on the record laid. Oh, I don't know the tune. With Steve from SK Crafts. <laughs> <laughs> Always going forward because he ain't got reverse. <laughs> when I look back, it was flowers for Nikki. Then it was funnel. Oh, no, you missed out. Um, light poles. Oh, yeah. Plugs. Real inches. Real inches. Knots. Extension. Painting. <laughs> what else was there? Necklace. Oh, no. Bracelet for Nikki. Uh, uh, Kim saying about the pitch in the moment that it's uh, going to be hard to haul. And Paul just said, not on the space because it's not spindle orientation. Your microphone is breaking was, up. Even if it was spindle orientation, it wouldn't be hard to hold. Your mic's breaking up a bit, Wayne. It's the battery. All right, okay. Oh, no, no, it's plugged in. No, no. no it's plugged in. It seems to be all right now. I don't know why people have... I don't know why people have difficulty hollowing um, in spindle mold, hollowing end grain. I, I, I just don't know why. Like I said before, I've always kept away from it because it frightened me. But, um, I think it's just... I think now I've got them new hollering tools, I'm just going to play with it a bit more. He's in. He's saying, good afternoon all. He can't turn today. He got his first COVID shot and his arm's kind of sore. Hi, hey, Chesky. Hello, mate. Oh, sorry, Robert. Uh, uh, sorry, Robert. I, I misunderstood what you were talking about there. Uh, Robert was talking about shaping the outside and using the skew. Yeah. Uh, with the orientation of the wood that Steve's using, you wouldn't use the skew on that because of this side grain. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry, I did, Ben. I missed the, uh, the weird knot in his logo and the wrong type of chisel. In his uh, logo. <laughs> That's a flat, flat work chisel, not a gouge. Yeah, but there's nothing in my in my um, channel name just saying that I'm going to do nothing but wood turning, is there? Exactly, Steve. You tell them. <laughs> Some <meh. laughs> Steve Ellis has just come in. Hi, Steve. Yeah, and then, of course, the most recent things are funnels and dropping things. Funnels? I ain't done a funnel for ages. Do you want me to do one for you? There's still the opportunity yeah, of blowing out the side of this. Yeah, this is, if all your balls are three inch thick now. Yeah, two right. <laughs> Safety is in numbers. <laughs> right, Ruby has said, uh, Ruby has said, end green is easy if you hollow from the centre towards the outside. Wouldn't you agree with him? Yes, I would, Ruby. Because you're not, if, if you hollow from the centre, Towards the outside on end grain, you're not actually pushing against the end grain, you're pulling back against it and it's easier to cut. Yeah, because you're actually slicing the end grains in a supported manner, aren't you? Because they're pushing against each other. Yeah. Right, let's just see if we can. There's a little bit of a rough bit in there, see if we can get that out.
Steve Ellis has said, a long enough to drill on this would give it a funnel. Some very negative people out in your chat. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the good thing is while they're picking on me they're leaving somebody else alone it's either that it's either that or they come in for a Friday night or buggery's done again <laughs> just think I could have been out shooting I had the opportunity to go shooting as well and I decided to stay with you lot Would you would you have been going out shooting anything to eat? Yeah, rabbit. Oh, see, you could have gone out shooting and sent me some. <laughs> I will send you some. Yeah, but Pete from Twisted Trees has said he's quite fond of the ring tool for Engry and Holloway. Uh, he knows a lot of people don't get on get on with it, but I find it quick and easy. Tell you the truth, Pete, so do I. All right. So yeah. that's up to 240. Let's get some sand and sealer on it. And then we can get the Yorkshire grit on it. Robert from Hodgepodge has said, it's a good thing you could redeem yourself by showing you're able to glue things together <laughs> after that last Starbond escapade. After the last yes. Starbond escapade with the <laughs> finial. That was so, last week. That was embarrassing. Right, as a, fellow, Gerard, as a fellow member of the Starbond family, I was embarrassed for you. Was you? Right. <laughs> Ger Gerard yeah. is asking the question: Have uh, have any of you ever used the hook tool to hollow? Personally, I haven't, but it is very good on end grain, and it works very similar to a ring tool for hollowing end grain. Wayne was in his element. When, I, when the glue wouldn't stick. Oh, it was brilliant. I loved it. <laughs> Ruby says on a different note, I'm celebrating today. I just got my income tax done. And for a change, I get money back. Whoa. Well done. Ruby, well done. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I like being the subby. Because I get money back every year. <laughs> Not having to give it. All the years I used to give it out. Yeah, don't forget to uh, smash that thumbs up, folks. Show Steve. Yeah, Brian's just Show reminding Steve. everybody. Thank you, Brian. So. Uh, Robert Hodgepodge is replying to Ruby and saying, Woohoo, Ruby, new layer time. I think she's got plenty of layers, to tell you the truth. <laughs> tell you the truth, no one, Ruby, if she went out and bought a new layer, she'd probably give one of old ones away. <laughs> Eric Winkler's in. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Right, so let's get the Yorkshire grit out. It's quite a pretty bit of wood, that. Yeah, that's just what um, Colin's saying. He's saying it's a lovely colour. So, original first. Oh, Jigsy's in. Evening, Jigsy. All right, Jigsy. And Woodworth, owned by Paul, has said you've got 73 watching at the moment. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for everybody for coming over. Um, obviously, well, I don't know about Mark, but I'm not on YouTube, so I can't comment as to how many is watching. Uh... Ruby saying she has used the hook tool and it works well. Uh, you still have to cut in the right direction, though. She doesn't need another lathe, but she has been eyeing up the, the record power ones. If you're looking at the record power ones, Ruby, I'd go for the big one. The uh, the Regent. That's that's the one. From, from what I've seen, that's the one I'd go for. Is that the one Brian's got? That's the one Brian's got, yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, Bob Lapsley's just come in. He's uh, saying, sorry, he's late. What woods are there? It's oak and mahogany, Bob. And Peter saying to Ruby, if you get a record power lathe, make sure you get one that goes in reverse too. <laughs> I think they all do reverse now, don't they? See, I'm sure you why an inverter up to go in reverse. Yeah, I'm sure you could if you wanted to. It's only a flick switch to change polarity, isn't it? Oh, Wayne and Valerie come in. Hi, Wayne and Valerie. Hope you're both well. Yes, they have. Good evening, Wayne and Valerie. Ruby saying she's needing a bigger shop. Yeah. I should imagine she is with them 13 lives. Ryan at Hartwell turn and says, all the coronet range to go backwards. Yeah, I think if I had another one, what a big one. One with a cast bed. Is the is the one like Brian's got a cast bed or is it still bars? No, no, it's cast. Yeah. A bit more it's weight to him, isn't it? A bit more weight to him. Yeah. Mind you, the difference with um, with record, well, I'm going to say this, and I'm, you might well prove me wrong. The difference between the the record with having the 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 double bars and other layers that have the double bars is that the record power ones are solid bars, aren't they? Yeah, they are solid. Yeah. Yeah. See, a lot of them used to use tubes rather than solid bars. Yeah, and I think I'm almost sure. I'm just going to measure it before I open my mouth. Yeah, the forty mil, forty mil solid bars. So uh, they're quite chunky bars. Ben Jabman has said his wheelbarrow goes in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> right, Yorkshire grip microphone. Get a nice shine on this. Mark's very quiet once he fell asleep. No, he's. Uh, I think he's still sorting some fundraising stuff. All oh, right. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're all right. No, no, you're all right. No, you're all right. Fred Gulliver's just come in. Evening, Fred. Hi, right, Fred. Thanks to everybody coming over. Really do appreciate it. Right. I don't know if I've missed him coming in, but I love Woodturn and Adam is here as well. Yeah, he's in at the start. Oh, he was in the start. Grand. Yeah. We were watching uh, Phil Irons earlier. On Instagram. Yeah. Um, well, I was watching the. You, you put it up in the in the uh, chat earlier on, Mark, about them being on the classic cars thing. Yes. What Phil he was. said. Phil Irons. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. said I said to him in his Instagram live that he was back on the telly this morning, and he said, "Oh, what again?" <laughs> <laughs> so in the he, oh, he said, "Oh, that's good." He said, I'm going to get some more orders in for some more gear sticks. <laughs> He's turning a, look what looks like a big piece of monkey puzzle. It's been turning for most of the day. Monkey puzzle bowl has an end grain. Nearly, uh, I've got to say, <laughs> all monkey puzzle bowls are turned end grain. Yeah. All right, so right, I'm not going to put no finish on that yet until I've done the end. Barry's in from Real Simple Things. Hi, Barry. Hi, Barry. Barry now has grit. Oh, does he? he? Does. Yeah, it arrived today. Make sure this is tight. Yeah, don't forget, folks, you can, uh, if you like what Steve's doing, press the thumbs up. 
If uh, you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing and press the notification bell. So whenever Steve adds content or does a live, it'll pop up in your recommended feed. And if you really like what Steve's doing, there's a link at the top of the chat where you could buy him a coffee. Because he does like a flavoured coffee. <laughs> Don't get Ryan started. <laughs> I, think it's a, I think Steve's favourite is a pumpkin latte or something. I'm not even going to mention that. I'm not even going to say anything. <laughs> Pumpkin, I'm not baiting. Pumpkin latte. Pumpkin latte, yeah. <sighs> Nathan Miller's in from Berrien Springs, Michigan. It's a new name. Hello and welcome along. Good evening, along. Nathan. How welcome. are you doing? Oh, I've got my camera look. Where have I? Bye, KD. Have a good weekend. See you later, KD. Thanks for coming over. Don't get to practice that pork up. That's better. You see now. Pete says Wayne likes flavoured coffee too, as long as it's red. <laughs> yeah. The only flavoured coffee I like is coffee flavoured. Coffee flavoured coffee? Yes. Um, right, Eric's, Eric's asking what wood. It is oak and mahogany, Eric. All right, so I'm going to gradually go up with these different sizes. I've got to say, Steve, I'm watching this on my phone on YouTube. Yeah. The picture is outstanding. Is it? Good. Yeah. Um, Ruby's asking, is this piece side green? Yes, it is, Ruby. Barry's Wood Creation says, Steve, I turned a bowl almost identical to your vase oh, cool. a while back and used oak and mahogany. And I must say they are a great contrast. Yeah, they do look nice together. I've done a few blanks of oak and mahogany. I do like it. Should get an extend. I think I've got an extension bar for that. First thing I'm going to get when I get a bigger workshop is um, the extension bars for this lathe. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not a lathe that goes backwards then. Oh, you know. You can have more than one lathe, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> Hodgepodge says he's got a, a heap of off guts he needs to glue into something. Hodge, turn a chaos bowl. Chaos bowl. Jeez, what do you say? Wait, oh, Peter's asking, Steve, how have you measured the outside of the neck before drilling out the inside? I'm now going to do it before I go on to the next one. Neck's quite wide, and actually. 
Wayne of the Big Feet has said he's put two coats of paint on the new plaster. He was hoping Steve was going to do some colouring so he, so he could continue watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> right, the neck is 70 mil. So, I'm not going to go no bigger than 60. That's only going to leave you 5 mil either side, mind. Is that too thin, you think? Well, what I would actually suggest doing now is start shaping the neck before you do any more drilling. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, before we lose the integrity. Yeah, yeah you're before gonna, you're yes, put a lot exactly. of stress on this end. You've already got a fair amount of stress with the hole you've drilled since so you've got the mahogany at the top glued onto the yoke just underneath. Right. Okie dokie. So, safety glasses. Better clean them so I can see what I'm doing. Mark at the garden workshop's in. Hello, Mark. Says he's liking the shape of that vase. Thank you. So, I'm going to use the bowl, free bowl gouge to start with and finish it off with the spindle gouge, I think. So, reface it. And sharpen it, I think. So what's everybody's plans for the weekend then? Weekend, what's that? <laughs> That's a very good question, Steve. So <laughs> what's everybody's plans for tomorrow then? <laughs> Brian, no, you don't want to use PVA, mate. You want to use wood glue. PVA thought, is wood glue. I thought PVA was watered down wood glue. No, no PVA no. is wood glue. That's what oh, tape is bond is. Yes. Oh, is it? Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. sorry. My apologies. Yeah, it's just different makes of it. And I think PV stands for polyvinyl acrylic. I think I may well be wrong there. Right, Ruby's apologising, she's got to go, she's got a club meeting at the moment. Alright Ruby, thanks for coming over, have a good day. Bye Ruby. Oh sorry, sorry, she's got a club meeting tomorrow. Sorry about that Ruby, misunderstood. John Starr is taking the... <laughs> Colin's starting on a pedestal bowl. Polyvinyl acetate. Polyvinyl acetate, yes. Three bits. Good evening, Steve, Evans, and everyone. Sorry he's late, but he's still delivering pizza for fun reasons. Brian is fence judging at uh, Torilla, a uh, one day event tomorrow. He's putting a new fence with the gate at the field on Sunday. Nice. This cherry I've brought down, which is still ongoing, I'm trying to get rid of all the bloody ivy. There's more ivy on this cherry than what there is cherry. Eric's finished a live edge cherry bowl, and tomorrow he's got a worn up live edge bowl to do. 
Gerard the French Turner, weekend watching two rugby matches, Ireland and France women. Yeah. Okay, it's the cigarette that he gave him. Good luck with that, Gerard. That's going to be hard to turn. Bit of vibration when you turn it. Eh? Yeah, you're away from the chuck, aren't you? Yeah. You're fair away from the chuck, and you've you've actually got the bottom of the vase quite, quite thin as well. Yeah. That's why that's why you're getting the vibration. I'm going to just try and finish it off with a spindle gouge and then call it there. Hey, Terry. Sorry, I didn't say hello earlier. I did. Chunky on the top there, isn't it? Right. Wayne of the Big Feet has just answered Brian and said, Brian, I have judged my fence, and yes, it still needs painting. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a couple of doors to make over the next uh, couple of days. Doors. Uh, John Scarborough is saying he was given a couple of bits of Hawthorne yesterday. Can anyone tell me how it turns? It turns quite nice, Terry. Uh, John, sorry. Upper our wood turnings in. Um, Ron, it's Roy. Ron. Is, it, is it Roy? Rob, Ron. Neil has said, Win, you need some of those well sheep. They love eating ivy. I tell you, this ivy, I'm, I'm thinking about keeping some of this ivy to turn. That's how that's how thick it is. Christina Michael Esseltine are in. Oh, Good evening, Christina you. Michael. Evening, how are you both? I'll take that a little bit deeper now, can't I? Helps if I put the chuck in. Divi. I'm a bit surprised nobody's mentioned it, but I sh there is something, a big event happening tomorrow, which I shall be watching. Big event that you're watching. It's Philip's funeral. Hey? It's Prince Philip's funeral tomorrow. Yeah, it is. Well, Three o'clock. You've, you've, you've still got stuff to do in the morning. True. Like, watch out, Oliver. I'll be I'll be too busy with this bloody cherry tree. I shall be busy opening my thousands of birthday cards tomorrow. Right, Eric is saying, Steve, is there much vibration on the vase now? Would an easy rest or a, a centre steady uh, be a good idea? No, there's no vibration at all now. now. Now I've stopped cutting it. Right, I would say on something of this length, probably not. He's not going to be hollowing it out. He is just rolling down the middle. Mind you seeing that... The piece of mahogany at the top, um, glued onto the piece of oak, is looking very, very thin at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, she's all right, Wayne. <laughs> no, it's still quite a bit there. Still quite a chunky bit there. I'll show you. Uh, overhead. See, so it's still quite a bit, uh, quite a chunky bit there. All right, okay, yeah. Ruby has said, uh, Prince Philip was a great man and well-respected in Canada. He was really well-respected here as well. Yes, definitely. Um, he was, uh, I was in the Remy when I was in the Army. That's the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, and he was my Colonel-in-Chief. 
people say he was a bit sharp, but I think he uh, just told people what he thought. No, he wasn't sharp. He had a sense of humour, and it's the type of sense of humour that um, doesn't go down well these days because of snowflakes. Yeah. Okay. Trouble is now, you can't say anything to anybody without upsetting them. I once met, uh, I met Prince Charles, uh, I met Prince Charles in the uh, it was just after he started doing the, the, the horse driving trials or the carriage driving. Uh, there was a yearly event at a, a, a place about 20 miles away from me called Drumlanrig Castle, which is just north of Thornhill in Dumfries and Galloway. And they used to have a, a yearly horse driving trials, which Prince Philip took part in. I used to be in the craft tent and... Uh, demonstrating wood turning on my small lathe I had at that time and uh, we had a chat one weekend that he was up uh, doing the horse driving trials and uh, funnily enough he referred to one of the bulls that I had on display as a gazunda what's a gazunda Wayne? what's a gazunda? a gazunda before people had um, toilets in their houses they had bulls to piss in, basically, and it used to, <laughs> and it used to go under the bed. <laughs> Pop that goes under the bed, goes under. Love that. Mark at the garden workshop says, "Is this going to have a glass tube insert?" No. It's All just right, going to be. Steve Ellis. All right, sorry. No, go on. No. Steve Ellis says, have you got the extension bar for the Forstner beds? No, I don't think I have. I will check. Uh, I Jigsy, Jigsy met uh, Prince Philip in the uh, Duke of Edinburgh Awards. I will check. I'm not sure I haven't got one. I actually managed to free up my uh, extension bar the Ooh. other day. Got the piece out of it. it stuck. Oh, I don't think they're big enough. I have got some, but I don't think they're big enough. They only look like quarter. Yeah, they're not quite big enough. Oh, John John from New Jersey has just said, Wayne, just what's your free wood turner? Thank you, John. Appreciate it. So just clean this up. So that's as deep as we're going to go. Yeah, Gerard the French Turner has said in French we call them a pot de chambure. Yeah, chamber pot. Yeah. Same thing. Steve Fleming's in, says sorry he's late. It's all right, Steve, we won't hold you against you. So that's down, what, three and a half, four inches? So I don't know if I want to go any wider than that. Let's have a look. Marcus having a having to drop out because he's having internet problems All right, mate. and Chisky's Wood Creations has got to go he's back to work on his boat shelter nice one Chisky alright mate thanks for coming over both of you so that's 48 and we've got 70 mil overall so can we get one a little bit wider through there no no no, no. no. stress is on their neck ok so I'll just clean up with a Spindle gouging, shall I? Just finish it off, round that up. Gerard the wood turner has said bye, Chisky, and he's got his caps lock on. Shouting him. Oh, God, now you're risking this. Hey? Putting a lot of stress on that thin neck. No, I, I was just thinking about how much wood's there. It's 10 mil it's on the side. There. There's loads on there. What's the matter with you, Pear? You keep telling me, push yourself, push yourself. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, Steve. <laughs> I can see Wayne's face. <laughs> No, I'm just going to round that off. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to do. Calm this down. This is how I'm watching. <laughs> Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Don't panic. I've got plenty of glue. I'll glue it back together. 
I've got some starb on, that'll be all right. Funny you should say that. I, somebody, I saw somebody last Friday using Starbond to stick st- stuff together. <laughs> How'd they go for it? Di- it didn't work. <laughs> right, so as thin as I'm going. I do think that was you to remember those, uh, Wayne. Yeah, I think you might be right. See, the trouble is we use for what the stuff we use for work. Um, don't matter what, that goes off in about three seconds, but I suppose that Starbond's different. All uh, right, let's just clean this up a little bit. Oh, to be fair, the finial was a bit small for the hole you were gluing it into. Well, it was a little bit. Go in there, really clean that out. <laughs> what are you two doing? Are you two screeching? Uh, no, ben, Ben's just Ben Jamins just said, Steve, always listen to your elders. Wayne had hundreds of years of experience over you. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ruby's asking, Do you have a, a box rest uh, to insert to the inside? Um, I don't know if he does, Ruby, but he's he's not actually going to hollow out the inside. He's, he's only no. doing the drilling. Yeah, I'm not going to hollow it out. I'm not that confident on hollowing yet. I just want something there to clean that out. And Terry said you can only glue it up if there's any wood left to glue, <laughs> glue up. That's true. <laughs> Tell you, since how Ruby's mentioned uh, box rests, it is very rare these days that you see anybody using them. What is a box rest? I've got to ask you. It, it's a flat rest, um, flat which plate. is quite. It, it's a flat, flat plate, yeah, which is quite broad right. for doing boxes for, for rest, usually for resting scrapers onto. But you can mm-hmm. use them for for resting the the lace, uh, uh, any sort of hollowing tool onto as well. Brian's got one. I think he says he doesn't like using it. I used to have one, but I don't know where the hell it's gone. Eric Winkler saying he likes the vase, Steve. Can you use resin to seal the inside? Yeah, you could do, I suppose. You could do, or you could use... Uh, Starbond? White bond. <laughs> She's a white bond poly. I can't remember the name of that stuff. Um, White Bond Poly. There's a brand name I'm thinking of. All oh, right. That they use in America a lot. <laughs> oh, General Finishes. No, it's, it's a White Bond Poly. Uh, Hodgepodge probably knows it. Come on, Hodgepodge, you know the stuff. I saw a post on it today on one of the Facebook groups. Paul's got to go. See you, Paul. See you there, Paul. Uh, not the Minwax. Not Minwax. It's, um, something coat. What's going on here? Have you said polyvine? Um, Rustins. No, uh, Rustins. That was it. Oh, Rustins. I think it's Rustin's Polycoat. Okay, that's a, that's a UK one then. Oh, is it? All right. Yeah. Ruby said white bond poly wouldn't be a good seal for water. Oh, really? I thought it would. Plastic coat. That's it. Rustin's plastic coating. Yeah, that that's, that's a UK uh, piece of kit, that is.
Yeah, lots of people are coming in with plastic cord from Rustin's. So that's the stuff I was thinking of. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Lumber paper spinning round. That's why you don't wrap your fingers around it. <laughs> Stuart Ingerwell's in. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Good evening, Stuart. John's asking, is the Rustins completely waterproof? As far as I'm aware, it is. All right, so, extraction off. Ryan says it's good for the inside of cobblers, cobblers, as it's alcohol proof. So am I. Well, alcohol proof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't know, Steve. He's asking, does the Plastico give a gloss finish or a matte? I think it gives a gloss finish, Steve. Yeah, I think it's a gloss finish from memory. And Peter's giving you a bit of advice, Steve. What's that? A sand and stick rather than using your fingers. Yeah, I did look for a bit of stick. I'm going to make one. I'm going to cut a groove down one so I've got one. Jennifer's in. Evening, Jennifer. Where Thank the hell you. have you been? <laughs> As you told. Evening, Jennifer. <laughs> Evening, you Jennifer. Finally, make it. <laughs> Sorry to tear you away from your whatever you have. <laughs> See, when I was just a slightly bit more subtle than you were. <laughs> Wayne's been told before: in a voice, out of voice; in a voice, out of voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Ben Jamin's put in also attaching sandpaper to a long paintbrush works really well because the paper conforms to the bristles. But don't right. you get I, street, I, see don't where, I, I see where you're coming from with that one, Ben, but I, still, I, I find that um, the, the, the paintbrush, the bristles, they tend to be too soft, so you, you can't get a hell of a lot of pressure for doing the sanding. Also, don't you get streaks in your paint? Right. Matt Harbour's just come in. Evening, Matt. Hi, Matt. How you doing, How mate? How you doing? Um, no, I don't think it's a two-part. That it's it comes in a single bottle, I believe. What's that? The Rustins? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're Plastic right. coated. Yeah, I think it just goes with air. I think it's just air activated, isn't it? So just give us a coat of Yorkshire grit. Jigsy's got to go. See you later, Jigsy. See you later, Jigsy. See you, Jigsy. Uh, Ruby has said Rustin's is two part. Oh, Matt right. Harper's in. Hi, Matt. And Andy H has also said there is two part. Oh, it is two part. Oh, okay. I thought it was just in one tin. And Brian has also said there is two part. I think it must be two part. Must it be. must be. Harry's also said it's two part. And Gerard. That's your phone, Steve. Yeah, Steve, he... just had an email, Steve. Steve. Steve, yeah, just yeah, had yeah. an email. Yeah, email, can, Steve. That can go email. with the other 300 in a day. Yeah. It's telling you. It's telling you that Rustin's is two part. By the way, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just just emailed you to tell you that you've got two part. It's a sale item come up. <laughs> Half price, but you only get one tin. Oh no, Robert from Hodgepod only thinks it's two part. Ah. Oh, I suppose I could have a look. Right, hang on. Matt's come from a different direction. He's talking about something different. 
you have metal in, impregnant paint, then you have acidic corrosive spray you use on it. Um, have, I, have I missed a bit of conversation here? Is he on about a different product, though? He's on about a different... Now, what what Matt's on about is uh, the, the type of thing that um, that I use quite a bit, and I forget who it comes from now, but it's an American one, where the, the paint you have has got metal impregnated into the paint. I've got brass, iron, copper, and there's a, a spray that goes over the top of it to give it the, the verdigris effect. Oh, is that that? Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you're on about. Yeah, makes it tarnished, I, old. Tarnished. Yeah, but but Matt, Matt put that in, and I'm not very sure it's been part of a, a another conversation. <laughs> Stuart, you crack me up. He says Rustin's is one part and another part. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm Rustin's is two parts. Right, it's not the Modern Masters one that I use, Matt. Oh, God, I've forgotten the name of it. And I can't be bothered going out to the workshop to have a look. <laughs> I must admit, I was surprised how expensive it was. <laughs> it, yeah, you, it, it's got to be imported from... Certainly for us, it's got to be imported from the States. Mm. It is very expensive. Martin Saban Smith, I actually bought mine from Martin Saban Smith because he was going to start importing it um or oh, what three or four years ago but it it was it was too expensive but i actually bought mine from him which i'm still using now to tell you the truth yeah joe's back hi joe hi joe hi joe you don't use a lot of it though do you to be honest you um no you don't use a hell of a lot of it it it's and the thing is with the spray that you use to to give it the the verdigris effect you do mm. not use it uh, or you've got to cover all your, your bedways and everything. Yeah. Because as soon as it touches it, it'll rust. John Scarborough's got to go. Night See night, John. John. What's the time, guys, please? It's coming up to five past nine. Oh, it's not too bad. I was late with it. All right, so that's the Yorkshire grit. So I think I'm going to put some friction polish on this. Give it a nice shine. Pete says he had a hell of a job finding a nice round bit of stick for sanding inside things. Then he remembered he has a lathe. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. I've run out of tissue. I have to get my t-shirt on my underpants out, I think. All right. Use the old two-ply stuff. Use that up out of the way. So, Chestnut Products Friction Polish. The intro of this stuff is it get on your machine... It's a hell of a job to get off. Ruby says, Steve, that's looking really nice. Thank you, Ruby. Hopefully, get a couple of coats this on it. That'll look even better. Joe says she had to go and pick Glenn up as he's now eating his supper after a 300 mile bike ride. What's Push bike. Push bike ride. Oh, I very much doubt that, Steve. Now, the, the, the reason that Joe had to leave is that uh, Glenn actually parks his bike up at the, at the unit where he makes the grit. So it's all locked up properly and everything. Uh, so Joe would have to leave the house and travel about, uh, what, Six miles or so to go and uh, pick Lynn up from the from the unit and then get back home. What would have done him good was after all that time sitting on a bike walking home to get the exercise, wouldn't you stretch his legs? I bet he's cursing me in the background. 
<laughs> yeah, he might have been. Uh, I tell you what, if he's walking home, he might have been there by next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> what, because he's got little legs, or because he would have gone the wrong way? He's got little legs. Yeah, little legs. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Glenn, them two said that. I didn't say that. Them two said that. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> I bet he's choking on his kebab now. <laughs> Sorry, Glenn. I consider myself fired. <laughs> well, I'm going to give this a couple of coats of this just to build this up so we get a nice shine on it. Win Bigfoot said, I assume that it weren't cycling, Glyn. Well, the thing is, Win, you might say that, but Glyn has actually got a, a, a bicycle at the unit that he said he was going to use to go to work on every day. It's in a box, mind. <laughs> no, it's not in a box. It's not in, it is not in a box. <laughs> I'm so fired. Right, ben, uh, ben has just said, Glenn has a unit. I don't know why, but I always pictured him making it in his garage. No, Ben, he didn't used to make it in his garage. He actually, he actually used to make grit in his kitchen. That's the way he used to make it. Right, Gerard is saying, Steve, I found out with this finish, if you wait a couple of minutes between each coat... You get a better result. Yeah, I'm just going to give out two coats, and I'm just going to leave it a few minutes. I'm going to do another coat over the top of it. Let it try, because like Gerard said, if not, the undercoat is still tacky, and that tears it off. So I'm just going to leave it for a few minutes. I'll have a drink while I'm... Uh... You have a drink, Steve. I'll have a drink. Let's bring you guys back in for a minute or two. Oh, really? Oh, do we have okay. to? Okay. <laughs> Don't make me... Oh, there. And you, you don't see as much of me. You don't see as much of me when I do me lives. <laughs> Crying out loud. Brian's just put it hangs on the wall to remind him just how silly that idea was. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's Glenn's bait he's talking about. Yeah. All right. Wayne says he's got a diamond belt in the unit. Doesn't use that either. He's got a spare that's, one that he don't use. That's got Steve's got it. That's Steve. <laughs> that's JP's mum to have it. It's not mine. We share it. Six months each. Yeah. Always trick JP because I turn it inside out before I send it to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you can't get his tool sharp. <laughs> yeah, you, you wore it out. <laughs> <laughs> if I weren't so tight, I would buy a diamond belt because they have got a lifetime guarantee, haven't they? But I just can't. I just begrudge spending 150 quid on one. I can't see the point. Well, I suppose if you look at all the years you're going to buy belts at three yeah. and four quid. Right. The, the thing is, Steve, okay... With a diamond belt, you get a very, very, very fine um, sharpening on the blade. Yeah. Which dulls after about two passes. Yeah. So you've got to go back and sharpen again. Yeah, no, Remember you're working with turning tools. You're not working with um, um, bench chisels, if you like. You're yeah. working with turning tools. Yeah, because I'm like... Tell, tell Ben off. He's being disparaging about you. I'm sorry, Ben. I don't know, to tell you, I don't know how anybody can be bored of that picture behind me. That is one of the best photographs I have ever taken. It's a sunset from out the back of your house, isn't it? It is. 
no hodgepodge. We're using a secret, super secret uh, system of high tech internet gerbils. <laughs> internet gerbils. <laughs> to provide such clear and precise pictures. We could tell you how he does it, but then A, we don't understand it, and B, then we'd have to kill you. Believe it or not, if you now I'm talking about the pro edge here, and it would be the same with with a, a bench grinder as well. With the pro edge, if you sharpen your tool with the 60 grid belt on the pro edge, that tool is sharp. It's not very fine, but it's sharp. If you use a 120, it gets finer. If you use 240, it gets finer, and so on. But the thing is, once you get up above probably 240, it's going to be that fine that it's going to lose its edge very, very quickly. And you're just going to have to go back and resharpen. And to me, that's the same with the diamond belt. Daniel Hodge, I've written the answer in it. If you can understand that, you're a better man than me, can't get in. You didn't put penguins, did you? Yes. I explained about the penguins. Right. That's as far as I'm going to go with polishing it. I think that's good enough. Yeah, but Fred, if Wayne turns the light off, it goes dark in his living room. And you can't see Wayne or the picture. So, just got to part it off now then. Without dropping it. Well, that's a, yeah, this will be your first. <laughs> you lot have got no faith, have you? No faith whatsoever. <laughs> Let me just sharpen this up. Do you know what? I don't know why I bother some weeks. Uh, 25 degrees, 25 degrees. Matt's, uh, Matt's asking, uh, Steve, what is the overhead camera? I think he's referring to, is it just a webcam or some other sort of cam? It's a 4K webcam, mate. I must change because I haven't put the description for these in the, the still the original cameras I set up with, so I need to change the description on the channel really. Right. So I'm gonna put a slight undercut on it. Um, Fred's asking a question there. So what is your, the best? It's about your photograph behind. You'd like to see a better view of it. All oh, right. Um, it's on your Instagram, isn't it? I don't think it's on my Instagram. No, because that's a very old photograph. Just take a little bit of that off. <clears throat> Steve, are you using the um, new tech NDI? Yes. Yeah, because the, the old one glitches a bit. It's a few issues with the old NDI. Right, Mark, yes. Mark if, if I lift my laptop up, yep. is, that, is that showing the, the picture off any better? Just tilt it back a little bit. No, the other way. The other way? That's it, yep. There you go, folks. Right, grand. Hang on, Wait, they, hang on. I, I, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. We'll do it at, do right, it yep. at the end. Okay. Just Wayne and I were doing a pre production, pre production thing then. So, so I'll cut through that with a fine iron tool. That, that's not strictly true because we're using NDI now. The new updated version can run 
NDI through OBS on a Windows PC. So, let's get this out. Just sand the bottom of that up. Um, chuck, 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 chuck. If Pete's in the uh, chat and listening, he can add in his two pennies worth because he helped Steve set this up. Yeah, the first um, NDI for Skype was a little bit um, uh, unstable. Glitchy. So, yeah, very glitchy, losing audio and things like that. Since they've done the update for it, it's a lot better and a lot more stable. Um, you still get the odd little bit, like um, you'll perhaps see when we bring the guys back in, that sometimes the guys just alter a little bit in size. Um, but I think that's down to um, the feeds you're getting as well, like the, the, the live internet feeds. But we've been using this, what, now three weeks, four weeks? Yeah, three weeks, yeah, yeah at least. Yes, Robert, we are on a Skype call at the moment rather than StreamYard. So, um, That's how uh, Wayne and I can make faces at each other, because we can see each other, whereas in StreamYard you can't. So I'm just going to use this to clean this up. It does mean poor old Wayne has to sit there looking at my ugly mug for an hour and a half. Well, I don't really, because I, I, I usually put the chat over you anyway. <laughs> you asked for that, Mark. <laughs> now, I can't remember. Do, do Mylans do a, a friction polish? Because um, I know Rob at uh, um, Rob Summerlin at Woodsley Summercrafts has started doing some Mylan stuff. I don't know, mate. To be honest. For those of you in Canada. Go across and, and watch um, Rob Summerlin at uh, Woodsley's uh, Summer Crafts uh, because he has started um, getting more um, produce in there to sell, or product products, I should say, uh, in his site to sell. There you go, Matt. Pete, Matt Harbour, Pete from Twisted Tree says, NDI is a protocol which OBS and Skype can use. It was glitchy, but updated versions seem stable. As Mark said, we set it up for the Mike Walt lives that myself and Pete are in. And Steve set it up. Key benefits is if you have good upload speed, you can upload 1080p, which is yeah, evident well, from the YouTube that uh, you can see from the picture on YouTube how clear it is. Yeah, that puts me out there. When it comes to upload speed, I've got sloth speed. Your picture's been very good lately, though, Wayne. It has. I think that's been camera changes, though, more than anything else. All right. So I did notice last night, um, not last night, Wednesday night, that that was very clear. Consider what it used to be. Oh, yeah. What it used to be was, um, yeah, it was that good. All right, so I'm going to use a soft pad. Just put a little bit of sand and sealer on there. Brian's asking, what's considered a good upload speed? Anything over five is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pushing out... Um, through StreamYard, no, through OBS, sorry, I'm pushing out 11 mega second. Yeah, considering I get less than one yeah. upload speed. My broadband goes 
tomorrow from currently I'm on eight and it jumps up to 16 or 17 tomorrow because I'm changing to Halo. 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 Um, right, what do I want a bit? Yorkshire grit. That's what I want. A little bit of Yorkshire grit just to put. Actually, no. Yeah, Yorkshire grit. Just put a little bit on this. On this, just to buff this up a little bit. Mine has 6.5 on average. Terry's his upload is about 10. No. My upload speed is a man walking with one leg. <laughs> no, Pete said, Wayne, he said it wouldn't work for you as 1080, but may be good at 720, as you would be taking the StreamYard step out of the loop, so one less connection. Yep, there is that. Right, buff that off. I think I'm not going to friction polish the bottom. I'm just going to put a little bit of wax on it. Mahogany always comes up nice, doesn't it? Always get a nice shine to it. Yeah, I'm quite lucky. I only, I'm only like 200 yards away from the exchange, so um, we always get good speeds here. Yeah, I'm about four mile, and then I'm you've up. got, then you get the green box, and then I'm another two mile from the green box. Oh, yeah. I'm on fiber, and I'm actually the first house from the exchange. Yeah, it's about 400, 400 yards south of me. So they put fibre to our boxes about five year ago, but they've not put fibre to the houses yet. They've only put them to the to the exchange. Because my mate in town, he's got fibre to the house, and he's getting like sixty and seventy meg upload and like two hundred meg download. Jesus, Pete! Pete's got twenty five upload and two sixty five download. Yeah. Are you just showing off now? Yeah. <laughs> Right, you're seeing you've got fibre not far from you, Mark. Have you actually got fibre to your house? Yes. Right, in which case you should be getting about the same as what Pete's getting. Yeah, if you've got well, fibre to be. this. I should be from tomorrow, yeah. All right, I think we're there. I think we're there. Let that dry overnight. Yeah. I might buff it up. Ben Jamin says, Steve, you're getting... Quite good at this wood turning malarkey. I won't go that far, Ben. I won't go far. Is he? <laughs> I won't go that far. I must have missed something. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So called friends. So called friends. <laughs> right. Let's bring you guys back. Oh, no. Hang on. Let's go for a camera so they can see it first. Right. There you go, guys. Very nice, Steve. Nice. That's about five inches deep so that's not very deep but just want to buff it up I'll let it harden overnight and I'll just get on the buffer wheel and buff it up so it's got a nice shine to it but right bring you guys back it's nice I like it when I make a blank because you start something from nothing don't you yeah it's nice, Wait, nice. who wanted to see who wanted to see the photo behind us Oh, I can't remember. Somebody. Right, let's see if I can get that up there. Tilt it back. Tilt it back the other way. There you go. Very nice. That's a nice picture, that is. Right, whoever it was, send us a message, and I'll see about post the, uh, sending the photo. You know, the, the, with the light shining there, that that's not given um, a very good impression of the photo. It, but that is my favourite photo that I've taken. And you've taken a lot. 
I've I've taken a hell of a lot of sunset photos, and this one is my favourite. Right. Awesome. What we got here? Oh, thank you, Gerard. Something different. I get fed up with turning bowls all the time. I'm always looking for something different to turn, but I like the contrast between the oak and the mahogany. Fred Gulliver, it was. Right, Fred. Um, send us a message on Facebook, and I'll I'll see about um, sending you back a photo once I find it. I've got it hidden somewhere. All right, so. So thank you, Gerard. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Matt. Mark. Thank you, Ruby. Yes, Fred. Thank you, Neil. Uh, thank you, Colin. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Um, thank you, Fred. Thank you, Thor. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, guys, for such nice... Uh, Comments, very much appreciated. So who's on tomorrow? Ed's on tomorrow? Yeah, Ed's going to be chucking some colour in the boat. I don't know how much is going, going to go on the piece of wood, but he's <laughs> going to be chucking some colour in the boat. <laughs> uh, Rob C. P. will probably be on at lunchtime. Uh, Robert Hodgepodge is usually on Saturday afternoon at about two o'clock. Or was that yeah. Sunday? No, uh, two o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Nick will be on tomorrow night at eight o'clock. And then we're in the Sunday. Yep. Me and my lovely wife will be back Sunday. And then. Yeah. Uh, the the Nicky Show will be on at one o'clock. Yeah, the Nicky Show. <laughs> Nicky Show. <laughs> I'm going to do a shout out like Jamie Page, but the Nicky Show. <laughs> Chopping carrots by Nicky. <laughs> oh dear. Ed is colouring his lathe. Yes, yeah, about right. Poor old Ed. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming over and joining us tonight. Um, thanks to Wayne and thanks to Mark for coming over again, joining us. Uh, very much appreciated, gentlemen. <clears throat> and. Uh, oh, uh, and once again, congratulations, Mark, for getting such a great amount for the uh, the fundraiser. Well done, mate. Thank, thank pat you. On the, you deserve a pat thank on the back. To, thank you to everybody else for helping. And happy birthday for tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, very happy birthday. Yeah, ha happy 95th. <laughs> well, I thought, he, I thought he was collecting his pension on Monday. I thought he was 65. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 52 tomorrow. He's, fi he's 52. No, no way. No way. <laughs> yeah. Who'd have believed it? If that's the yeah. case, I was 33 last Sunday. Funnily enough, Mark, Mark at 52 looks 75. When I was 52, I looked 25. <laughs> I've had a hard life. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway. Yeah, congratulations for 900 subs as well, mate. Well done. Thank you. So Get in there. Next milestone. Next Let's milestone, a thousand. Then you get then you get monetized. And I become rich. And no, you don't get excited. Yeah, don't you. get excited. Yeah. <laughs> of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> you'll get rich uh, on your you'll get rich on your twenty five pound a month. <laughs> Terry's just said I'm young enough to, to be his son. Cheers, Dad. <laughs> oh, dear. Hi, Donna. Donna's just joined. We're now going, Donna. Hi, Donna. Yeah, but Donna's always late. Go back and watch it, Donna. Go back and watch it. Right, let's go, shall we? It's fashionable. Fashionable, see? Yeah, fashionable. You don't look a day yes. under 52. Cheers, <laughs> Terry. Thanks. <laughs> right then we'll go right so we'll see you guys later thank you very much for coming over hope you have a great weekend take care speak to you soon and bye for now night 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 bye everyone